Welcome back. So we've been talking a lot about turbulent fluid flows, and today I'm going to start deriving the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, or the RANS equations, which is one of our most powerful tools for modeling complex turbulent fluid flows. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in. We're going to start with uh, writing down the Navier-Stokes equations. We're going to decompose the flow field into an average and a fluctuating component. And we're gonna see uh, kind of how that makes these equations easier or harder to simulate. Okay, so Navier-Stokes, uh, ut, the time derivative of u, plus u dot grad of u, equals minus gradient of the pressure plus one over Reynolds number uh, Laplacian of u. So this is our diffusion term. And we're gonna talk about incompressible Navier-Stokes. So I'm also going to have that the divergence of u is equal to zero. So again, this comes from conservation laws. So this is mass conservation and this is momentum conservation. And we could derive those uh, by essentially writing down conservation volume integrals uh, and then use Stokes and Gauss's theorems to get uh, the Navier-Stokes equations in velocity or vorticity. Okay, good. Now, the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take our flow field variable u and we're gonna decompose it into a average component and a fluctuating component. So u, is a function of space and time, okay? U is a function of x and t, and we're gonna write this as an average component given by u bar, which is just a function of x, so we're gonna average in time and average out all of the fluctuations. And we're going to also have a fluctuating component, u prime uh, of x and t, okay? Good. And I wanna point out at this point, my u variable, is really a vector quantity. So u uh, is really like, um, you know, u of x and t is u, v, and w, okay? And so we can decompose each of these into u bar of x plus little u prime, v bar of x plus little v prime, and w bar of x plus little w prime. Okay, so I just want to be very explicit that this is a vector uh, partial differential equation in u, v, and w, and I'm just using the variable u to denote, uh, you know, these are all vectors, okay? Good, and vector u, we're gonna decompose into the average flow and the fluctuating components. And so, uh, why would we do this, first off? So, I mean, I think it's actually really good to ask these why questions. Uh, it turns out that this is a really good idea for modeling this uh, partial differential equation with uh, less degrees of freedom than you would normally need to, to model on a computer. But historically, a lot of the reason we look at averaged equations is because our measurements were not spatially resolved. So back before computers, back uh, before laser sheets made it possible to image a whole experimental velocity field at one time instant. If I had a fluid flow, like uh, a pipe flow, something like this, flow through a pipe, I might only be able to measure one point in space with a single hot wire measurement probe, but I could measure a really long time signature of that point. And then I'd move that hot wire over and I'd measure another point, and another point, and another point. And so what I'm gonna end up getting is the averaged field the averaged uh, velocity field at each point uh, in, in space, this u bar of x that's averaged uh, at each point in, in space, I'm averaging all of the time points, even though the individual instantaneous flow field might be turbulent and fluctuating and unsteady, we're gonna average that out. So that's what this u bar of x is. And the way we actually compute u bar is really simple, I literally take, um, u bar, and I'm going to average u of x and t with respect to time from zero to big T, and I'm gonna take the limit as that big T goes to infinity. I'm gonna average for long enough that this converges, okay? That's called uh, stationarity. 
So I'm going to take the limit uh, as t goes to infinity of this integral. And that's how I'm going to take the mean flow. I'm literally at every point in space, I'm going to average out time. And then I'm going to move it over to the next point in x, the next point, And that's how I'm going to build this u bar. And u prime is literally defined as everything else. I take my flow field minus my mean flow, and those are all of my fluctuating components. OK, good. Now, what we're going to do is, now in uh, the Navier-Stokes equations, this describes all of the fluid flow in a turbulent flow across all of the scales, the big vortices, the medium vortices, the teeny tiny vortices, all of it. But to solve this on a computer, generally speaking, I have to chop up my domain into millions or billions of degrees of freedom. And it's super duper expensive to resolve the biggest structures and the smallest structures in the same simulation. And so instead, what we might want to do is we might want to model what are the big quantities of interest. You know, when I'm developing or designing a, a wing for an aircraft, I might not care about every minor vortex. I care about what's the drag on that wing or what's the lift on that wing. Is it going to separate or stay attached at a different angle of attack? And so those are questions I might be able to answer just by looking at u bar of x, the kind of average flow quantities, and the first few kind of statistical moments of this fluctuating component. And it might be much, much simpler to model uh, the mean flow and a few statistical moments, like the variance of this, for example, than to model the full Navier-Stokes in all of their complexity. And so what we're going to do in this lecture and in the next lecture is we're going to take this, this is called the Reynolds decomposition. We're going to take this Reynolds decomposition and we're going to plug it into our, um, our uh, divergence free condition and we're going to plug it into our momentum equation and we're going to see what happens to the terms. We're going to see if we can simplify uh, and get a simplified model just for the mean flow or just for the, uh, the, the turbulence fluctuations. Okay, good. And there's a few facts you need to know <laughs> Uh, before we can do this, that are going to make this a lot easier in practice for us to compute this. Okay, so a few properties of these time averages um, is the following. So the first one that's kind of obvious is that u prime, if I time average u prime, that equals zero, because I, I literally said u prime is everything that is not in the time average of u. So we've already subtracted out the time average. This thing is zero centered. It's, it has a zero mean. So the mean of u prime is zero. Okay, another one is that it's, uh, this satisfies linearity. So if I average u plus v, that's the same as averaging u plus average of v. Same thing, I can't double average. If I take the average of u twice, I just get the average. That's just u bar. Um, there's some others, like if I take A bar times B and I bar that whole thing, that's the same as A bar B bar, okay? N I'll, I'll show you one that's not true in a minute. It's uh, actually, I'll do that right now because it's so important. A dot B bar is not equal to A bar B bar. That's super important. This is one of the most important ones. And the last one that's also extremely important, it's going to make our life a lot easier when we plug this into here, is that if I have the partial of A with respect to some variable, let's say it's uh, x or y or z, and if I take the time average of that derivative, it's equal to the derivative of the time average with respect to that variable x. Uh, and I'm using A, B notation. I switched here. Uh, that's because I got, I, I was looking through Lex Smith's notes and he uses A's and B's. Uh, so I got a little caught up here. But the two kind of, some of the most important ones for us are this derivative property. So if I time average a derivative, it's the same as the derivative of the time average. And this inequality that if I take A dot B, and time average, it is not the same as A time average times B time average. So notice here that U is zero mean. It is not zero variance. So I also have that U prime squared, if I time average that, 
this is not equal to zero. And this is an incredibly important uh, property. So this means that even though our fluctuations are, have zero mean, their variances and their higher moments are non-zero, they're non-trivial, and they're actually important in these dynamics. We're gonna have to keep track of these higher moments, these variances. These are also called Reynolds stresses. Uh, Reynolds stresses because they have the units of a stress, like this diffusion term here. They, have a, the, they act just like diffusion uh, on the Navier-Stokes equations. So we'll see that in a little bit. And this is at the heart of the closure problem, is I'm trying to take this very complicated equation that's space and time varying, and I'm trying to get uh, an estimation of how the mean flow evolved, like, like what the mean flow is gonna look like, and what the variances and Reynolds stresses are gonna look like, without solving this full equation in space and time everywhere, okay? And that's pretty challenging to do. And this is at the heart of what is known as the closure problem in turbulence modeling. So what we're going to find when we plug these in is that there are more unknowns than equations between u bar and the u prime squareds and u prime v prime time average and u prime w prime time average and all of these Reynolds stresses and their higher moments, there's gonna be more unknowns than there are equations to uniquely determine those unknowns. And so we're gonna have to make approximations and assumptions, kind of physics engineering modeling assumptions to build closure models to determine what those unknown variables are from the few equations we have. Okay, that's the RANS closure problem. And machine learning, deep learning in particular, is starting to give us really powerful tools for building those approximations, these, for approximating these Reynolds stresses uh, from other properties of the flow. Okay, good. Now I am going to kind of break this up into pieces. So I set up the problem here. This is the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes problem. We take our Navier-Stokes equations, we decompose our velocity field into the sum of an average component and fluctuating components. And we're gonna plug this in to our two equations, to our uh, incompressibility and momentum equation here, okay? And in the remainder of this lecture, I'm going to show you what happens when I take this uh, Reynolds decomposition and plug it into my incompressibility condition. And in the next lecture, I'm gonna take this same uh, decomposition and plug it into the full momentum equation, which is much more complicated, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So let's look at this divergence of U with the Reynolds decomposition. And uh, I'm gonna use this kind of vector notation so I can remember uh, what I'm doing and not mess up. So we have the divergence of U, the whole vector U, V, W equals zero. And what that implies for me is that um, partial u bar partial x plus partial v bar partial y plus partial w bar partial z plus partial u prime partial x plus partial uh, v prime partial y plus partial w prime partial z. Uh, in America, we call this z uh, equals zero. Okay, so there's six terms when I take this divergence uh, with these six terms and set it equal to zero. Now, what's super interesting about this is that I can actually learn a lot from this equation by time averaging it. And that's a strategy we're gonna do. We're gonna plug this decomposition into these equations and then we're gonna time average and see what terms die. So when I time average, again, the time average of a derivative is the derivative of that time average. And the time average of u prime is zero, time average of v prime is zero, time average of w prime is zero. So when I time average, these three terms equal zero, which means that these three terms, and again, when I time average, these are unchanged, all of these terms have to equal zero because when I time average and these go away, these are the three that are left. So these equal zero. And then by a similar argument, if all of these equal to zero everywhere in space, it stands to reason that these also add up to zero in the original equation. 
So these also add up to zero. And so I've actually derived two very important conditions from this one divergence equation. I've learned that the divergence of u bar, the vector, this is a little bit messy, the average of u bar equals zero. The divergence of my mean field is zero. And I've learned that the divergence of my fluctuating component is also zero. So that's really cool. The mean flow has divergence zero and the fluctuating component has divergence zero. And we learn that by plugging this into the divergence equation, uh, the incompressibility equation, and time averaging. Okay, good. So we're going to do the same thing with the Reynolds decomposition. We're gonna plug it into the momentum equation. We're gonna time average. We're gonna keep track of all of the terms. It's gonna be a mess, but kind of fun. And we're going to learn uh, which terms are active, which terms go away. And we're going to see a little bit more what that closure problem looks like. OK, so we're going to kind of derive this RANS closure model in the next lecture. Uh, let me see, should I recap? The big idea, it's actually quite simple. We have a turbulent fluid. And we're going to approximate that turbulent fluid by an average flow. This has lots of properties we might care about, like drag and things like that and a bunch of fluctuating components. And we're gonna see if we can simplify the problem by thinking about it with this decomposition, looking at just the average flow and the first few moments, the variance and the kurtosis and things like that of these statistical uh, fluctuations. Okay, thank you.